the area, I see a grandma hugging on this one on a grandbaby over there. <laughs> Praise God Almighty. We're grandbabies and grandsons and everything else. We got the little ones running around. I love it. Just bringing life into the church. Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. New life. New life in the church. Praise yes. God. We need to have the new life coming Amen. into the church. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. Let's pray. Father, we are your children, Lord God, and this is your word, Lord. Oh, Father, wash us and cleanse us that we may hear you clearly today, Lord God. Anoint your word that we, it may be as honey to our ears, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let us come before your throne of mercy and grace, Lord God, and lay down at your feet and say, Lord, what do you have for me today? And you will, we will give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' holy name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 There you Praise go. God. Praise God. On Wednesday night, I uh, started a little, I didn't even know it was going to be a series at the time, but a little bit of a series because I knew at the time that there was more to it than what we were able to get into on Wednesday night. But it was a good time. We were uh, talking about how we have given our lives over to the Lord and we can trust Him with our lives. Can we trust Him with our lives? Yes. Yeah, we can. Yes. Okay, good, good. I was trusting Amen. with mine. I was hoping you would too, you know. Amen. I'll tell you what. He should be Lord of our life. And we say we give our life to the Lord, right? When we come to Him, when we come and make Him our Lord, we give Him our life and we're, uh, we make Him our Lord. And sometimes uh, as we grow, go through this life here on this earth, sometimes we wonder... Are you messing up here, Lord? Did you really get this right? Can I trust you with my life? Right? Sometimes we wonder, with all the things that's going on in our life, we're wondering what the world's going on. But praise God. I don't know what that was. I don't want to rebuke it in Jesus' name. <laughs> but sometimes we kind of wonder what the world's going on in our lives. So if we have made Him our Lord... If we have given our life to Him, we need to know that we can trust Him with our life. Amen? Amen. So, something I rarely ever do is the Lord had me look up the meaning of the word Lord in the dictionary. Not in the Hebrew or the Greek or anything like that. We've been through all that. Brother Bill's done an amazing series on, on what the different names of God Amen. mean. Yes. But I looked this up, and this is interesting. The, the word Lord... In the dictionary, just what it means is one possessing great power and authority. Amen? Amen? I want to make sure the one that I'm giving my life over to is one that has great power. Amen? Amen. We need to have a powerful God in our lives. And the only one that is that is Jehovah God. Amen. Jesus, Amen. His Son. Amen? That's right. There is no one else. There is none else that has any power or authority here on this earth or in the spirit world or anywhere else. I know when I got in trouble the first time, I knew I had nowhere else to go but to the almighty God of the universe because I had gotten myself into so much trouble, I knew there was no one else I could go to. Where else can I go, Lord? You have the words of life. What Peter said to Jesus. When he says, okay, you don't understand what happened. Are you going to leave too? He said, where else are we going to go, Lord? You have the words of life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We may not understand what's going on. A lot of times I don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> but that's okay. I can trust him. He has great power and authority. He has authority over all the power of the enemy and everything that's happening in this world. Amen? He is the Lord, and I have made him my Lord. To where I can say, Lord, you have complete authority over me. I don't pick and choose what I want to do today or what I'm not going to do today. I'll do whatever you say. I'll do whatever you say. And I can trust him with that. It says, now this is a bread keeper. Bread keeper. That is what the dictionary says. That one of the, the definitions of God is Lord is, is bread keeper. I like having him as my bread keeper. Oh, yes. 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 I want him keeping my bread, praise God. I don't have to worry about what I'm going to eat or what we're going to wear and all that sort of thing, right? Uh, Matthew 6.33 says, uh, 
uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. He is my bread keeper. I don't have to worry about my bread for the day, what I'm going to eat for the day. And he tells us, don't worry. He is my bread keeper. I need to be seeking him. Are you my Lord today, or have I taken back the, the reins of lordship over my life? I want to make sure that I've released the reins into his hands. Amen. You know, we've had so many different sayings. Uh, I can see these bumper stickers from years ago. God is my co-pilot. I don't want him to be my co-pilot. I want him to be my pilot. Amen. 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 I want him to be my pilot. Because if I got my hands on the steering wheel, I'm going to run this sucker into a tree. Huh. Uh, I've been there and done that too many times, right? Ooh. Anyone else been there and done that? Ooh. Yeah, man. Ooh. Amen. Amen. If we're being honest, that's what we do. We drive this thing into a ditch. We drive it into the nearest tree or into a brick wall somewhere. But I want him to be the driver. Amen. He is my pilot. But I can wrestle it back away from him, right? I can do that. It's a dumb idea, but we tend to do it sometimes. When things aren't going the way I want, or this doesn't make sense, so I'm going to go on and, and take this back, Lord. I'll, I'll do it my way for a while. Yes, Not a good idea. But he is our bread keeper, amen? Yes, Lord. Yes. It's also a title of honor or nobility. Honor. Honoring God. And he is noble, praise God. He is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Yes. Yes. And we sometimes come into the house of the Lord or into his presence just kind of nonchalantly and all that. And yes, he's our daddy and all that, right? I mean, he says, come unto me all your heavy laden, and I'll give you rest, right? But he wants us, we should come with some reverence. Amen. He is a mighty God. He is a yes. holy God. Yes. When Jesus taught us how to pray, first thing he says, our Father who art in heaven, holy are you, Lord. Yes. Holy are you, Lord. We're going to come and give you honor and glory and worship your holy name. It is also the other definition of supremacy or dominion. He has dominion over me. I want him to have dominion over me. Or else one of us again is going to have control of this thing. And I don't want to wrestle it away from him. I want him having dominion over me. It's either one of three of us is going to have dominion. Either I'm going to take dominion over myself and do it the way, my way. I did it my way. Right? There ain't no way. I don't want to do it my way. Did that. It sucked. So yeah. I said, okay, Lord, I want to do it your way. Or else the enemy is going to have dominion over us. Ever been there? No, oh, yeah. I've been there. I've been there. I didn't like that at all. No. When he, and boy, he is a tough taskmaster. He's a rough one, boy. He will beat you up. I don't like his dominion over me. But he will doesn't care. He will beat you up and everything else and drag you down into the depths. I don't like being there. Or else God Almighty is going to have dominion over us. If we, it depends on who we are surrendering to. Just like Pat was saying a little bit ago. I surrender. I make a choice. Lord, I make you my Lord. And I'm not going to take it back. Just because things aren't going the way I want them to. Think you are going the way you want to, Pat? Probably not. Not to, I don't think you'd have chosen for all this mess going on in your shoulder and every foot and your ankle and everything else has been happening, right? But I don't understand it, but you still got dominion over me, Lord God. I'll do whatever you say. You are my Lord. You are supreme. Yes. And then as I was getting ready for this, I looked on the internet, on, on Facebook, which I do about every two or three weeks, because I just don't have time for all that mess. But someone put this on the internet the other day, and I thought, thought it just fit so well. It says, good morning. This is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. Absolutely. Good. I'll be handling all your problems today. I will not need your help, but just your trust. Hallelujah. So relax and enjoy your day. Amen. Isn't that great? Woo, I thought, man. man, talk about perfect. I mean, I, I like, ooh, yeah, man, I felt that one all over. That felt good all over, better than any place else, right? I mean, man, oh, man, good morning. This is God. I'll be handling all your problems today. And that is a very accurate description of what happens in yes. our lives if we have made him our Lord. Yes. I like that. I like that. I'll be handling everything. 
I don't need your help. But Lord, if you do it this way and you, if you do it that way, and, and boy, this got messed up, Lord, how's it? When did he lose control of your life? When did he lose control? He hadn't lost control unless I wrestled it back away. Yes. I don't want to do that. Don't need your help, just your trust. Just trust. Okay, Lord, I don't know what's going on here. But boy, I tell you what, I've gone through so many different things. There, there was an article I saw talking about an old man, 91 years old, going and, and wanting to share all his life stories about, right? When, when we were brand new in the Lord, we trusted in His Word and we trusted Him, right? Yes, amen. But as you go through life and you see Him working over and over and over and over again, now all of a sudden, not only do you have that trust inside, but now you have a knowing in your knower because you've seen Him deliver you from so many different things, right? We build up a testimony as we go through this life. Yes. All of a sudden we say, well, boy, I remember 30 years ago, we went through such and such, and it, you know, he brought us through the other side. We couldn't have imagined how we could get out of this thing, but God brings us right on through the other yes, side. Yes. And now when we go through the, something like this, and we see someone else going through it, say, wait a minute, I've been there. I've yes. done that. You know, because sometimes we get the feeling, boy, we're the only ones that's ever gone through something like this, and, and God just must be really hating me right now. He's the big meanie up in the sky that's going to squash me like a bug. No, he doesn't do that. I've been there, and I've gone through that too, right? Yes. And this is how the Word of God helped me get through. If we're doing it by, by our own power, don't share that kind of garbage because you didn't get through it on your own that's power, right. amen? Yeah, that's right. But this is what the Word said. Like we put our faith in this, and all of a sudden, we made it through the other side, praise God. Amen may not have been exactly the way I'd like to come through the other side, right? Sometimes things happen in this earth that I just would rather not go through. Amen? Can you imagine uh, uh, Job when Satan was standing before the Lord and he says, have you considered my servant Job? After the second time, he'd be like, Lord, would you just leave my name out of this? You know, just don't bother to mention me, okay? Just leave me alone. Leave me out of this conversation, would you? But God Almighty knows what He's doing. He knows what He's doing. And I can trust in Him. He wants our trust. And we can relax. That's the beauty of it. Just relax. Just kick back and take it easy. Just like Jesus said, don't worry about today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today's got enough to worry about on its own, right? I don't have to worry, and oh my goodness, boy, the rent's due or the car payment's due or whatever's happening tomorrow. I'm going to go get this test done on my body or whatever's going on. I can tr relax. I don't have to worry about all this stuff. Jesus spends the whole sixth chapter of Matthew talking about don't worry. I like not worrying. Worrying isn't any fun. Anyone enjoy worrying? I don't enjoy worrying at all. But when I can relax and just enjoy my day. Lord God, you are my God. I don't have to worry about all this. And this is something I shared on Wednesday night. God cannot and will not mismanage your life. Amen. Amen. My goodness. Amen. That is a comforting thought. Yes. That is comforting to me. He will not and cannot mismanage mis manage my life. If I've given it to him and turned it over to him, when again, when things aren't going the way I want them to or the way I think is right or anything else, he's still got it under control. He still knows about your leg, Brother Sidney. He knows about your leg. Yeah. How's it doing today, Brother? Any better? About the same? Coming along. Hmm? Coming along. Coming along. Praise Amen. God Almighty. Praise We're God. standing with you, Praise Brother. God. We're standing with yes. you. Yes. And we rebuke that garbage that the enemy's trying to put on you. Yes, yes, but God Almighty still knows about your leg. Mm -hmm. He still knows about your steps. And we're about to talk about the steps that God has ordered in your life. Amen. Amen. That he has got us in the palm of his hand and he will not let us go. Amen. He will not mismanage this thing. He can't mess it up like we would. Jeremiah 29, 11. 
we've again I shared this on Wednesday night, but it's well worth repeating. It says, For I know the plans I have you for you, says the Lord. The, they are plans for good and not for disaster. This is a New Living Translation. Not for disaster. Sometimes we go through things that just seem like disasters going on. I don't know what's happening. But I know the plans that I have for you. They're plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Sometimes we get to the point where we can't see past tomorrow. We can't see past today. I have no hope for the next day. I have no hope for the future, right? Many times we've been there and done that. Anyone been, I've been there and done that. Or what in the world? I can't see getting through today, let alone what's going to happen tomorrow. I see no future. I see no hope. But with Him, if I have put my life, my life in His hands, He says, I give you a hope. I give you a future. I know that I can rest in Him. That's, I'll go through this. Again, when we've been in Him for a while, we realize, hey, we've been through things like this before. We come out the other side. And then when we someone see someone else that is struggling through this, say, hey, God's brought me through stuff that's kind of similar to what you're going through here. But he's got a future and a hope planned for us. Amen. Amen. Psalm 27, 23, 37, 23 says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Isn't that awesome? Amen. He directs our steps. He directs our steps and he is delights in every detail. Now that again is the New Living Translation. But I like the way they say it. It breaks it down a little bit more. Every detail of our life. I like knowing that my God knows every little thing that's going on. Amen. He knows if my big toe is hurting today, right? Mm -hmm. Or my little toe or anything else. He knows every little thing that's happening. He knows when our kids drive us crazy or our grandkids drive us crazy. He knows when the boss is driving us nuts. Or he knows every little thing that someone says to us. He knows everything that happens to us every day. And we can rest in him. Yes. He knows these things. He hasn't lost control of any of this. In verse 24, it says, Though they stumble, they will never fall. For the Lord holds them by the hand. Amen. The Lord holds them. I like knowing that my hand is in his hand, praise God. Put your hand in the hand of the one that still the water. <laughs> yeah. Amen. I don't know if they got a new Lord or not, but praise God, he wrote a good song anyway. But God holds me by the hand and it, I'll stumble. Though who stumbled? Though they stumble. Ah, did God stumble us? No. <laughs> he didn't, he's not the one that stumbled us. If we stumble, yes. which... We tend to do that. I don't know about y'all, but I tend to do that every once in a while. Fall on my face is what I do. We'll never fall, and what that means is Miss Beth fell. We know that. But praise God, she's not gone. She hasn't lost. When we go through something that happens in our life or what we don't understand, we haven't lost the whole thing, right? We're our salvation is still intact, even if we leave this earth. And one of these days, we're going to leave this earth. Everyone will. The way it is, it's a part of life. But we don't have to worry because we know that our salvation is secure in Him. Amen? Amen. Takes us by the hand. Listen to this. Talking about how we've been uh, young. I've been young, now I'm old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Blessed be God. Isn't Praise that God. great? Oh, Man. Yes, Jesus. I've been there and done that, been through this long enough. To where I've gone and seen a lot of stuff that's gone on, not only in our life, but I've seen it happen in my family's life and my friends and other people in the church and people I've met along the way. But God is not a man that he should lie. God is not seeing the righteous forsaken. God will not forsake us. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Sometimes you feel like you're speaking to the ceiling, right? And it bounces off. I, I told you guys on Wednesday night a couple of weeks ago that, that the Lord had given me something to share, and I kept thinking, well, I didn't possibly write. That's, that's not even the right thing. So I kept asking him for something new, something different. And I said, Lord, you, you really need to give me something else here because obviously this isn't the right thing to share. It just couldn't be. And I went on and did a little study and on and everything, 
And I kept praying, Lord, what is going on? Why, why, why won't you give me? It was like it was deaf. Like I was completely deaf. I couldn't hear another word. And it was like, I've given you what you need already, but I kept looking for something else. And what he gave me on that Wednesday night was something for a specific person. Mm -hmm. And that made all the difference. And we all had a great time anyway. Yes. We had a great time anyway. Yes. But God Almighty was preparing someone mm -hmm. for what happened last week when we baptized a bunch of people, right? Amen. We had a great time last yes. week. Praise yes. God Almighty. Yes. Saw God moving in ways, showing up at prayer. Amen. Showing up at prayer. Praise God Praise Almighty God. for His yes. Holy Spirit moving in our midst. Man, oh man, I love it when God shows up. Yes, and boy, it was strong on Sunday night. Boy, yes, it's it been was. good. Yes. Brother Tommy got a dose of it, boy. And I love getting the dose of him. Amen. Oh man, oh man. Oh, man. God Almighty does not leave us begging for bread. Amen. We go through times, or we, I've been through times where we're pretty close to begging for bread, and we've been in times of plenty. It's not like Paul said something like that. You know, I've been in times of plenty and times of, of uh, drought or whatever. But God Almighty is always there. He always makes sure that He has us in the palms of His hand. Yes. Psalm 40, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord. Ah, just like Pat was saying a little while ago, waiting on the Lord is one thing, but there is a time also of waiting and saying, okay, Lord, I trust you. I'm not going to go out in front of you and do anything about just to go out and do something. Far too often I've had uh, messed around and done that. Has anyone else done that before? Mm -hmm. Going, okay, Lord, I don't see you doing anything, so I'm going to go off and do something anyway. I'm going to go off and do whatever I feel is right, you know. If you're not going to do something, I'm going to do it. Yes. Right? <laughs> Been there and done that. If you're not going to do something, I'm going to do it. But I waited patiently for the Lord. Look, Cindy and I's learned if we're not in agreement on something, we pray about something, and she sees one thing, I see the opposite, one of us is wrong. So we sit. We don't move because one of us is wrong, and it might be me. And if we're not in agreement, we're not going to do anything. We wait. We wait patiently. Okay, Lord. Obviously, one of those is the wrong thing to do. And I don't want, unless we're in agreement, we're one. We're one, right? The two shall become one. We're going to stop and wait and see what God, God does. And look, it says he, he inclined to me and heard my cry. It means he leaned in and listened. Ah, you're crying out to me. Okay. I'm going to lean in here and listen to you instead of reclining in my recliner doing more mechanic work, right? Put the rear end in my recliner. But he says, no, he inclined towards me and heard my cry I, while I was waiting. Jesus says, ask and keep on asking, and it will be given to you, right? Don't just give up. Oh, well, I asked you for it. I didn't get it. Oh, well, I didn't get an answer. Oh, well, I'm done then. No, I waited patiently, and he inclined to me. He listened carefully. Verse 2 says, he also brought me up out of a horrible pit. And in, in the, uh, this is the New King James, in the uh, New Living Translation, the, the pit of despair is what it says in the New Living Translation. Wow. Isn't that awesome? The pit of despair. He's brought me up out of the pit of despair. Have you ever been in a pit of despair? I've been there to where you're going, oh my goodness, what in the world is going on here, Lord? I have no idea what's happening. Sometimes it gets overwhelming, right? Mm -hmm. This world can get overwhelming in what's happening to us, right? But he pulled me out of that pit of despair, the horrible pit, it says here, out of the miry clay. We go walking through this world, right? And it seems like sometimes we can barely move because our feet get stuck in the clay. And you can't hardly move. You can't hardly walk, right? And set my feet upon a rock. Who's the rock? Jesus. Jesus is the rock. Gee, he set my feet on that rock to where I'm not getting bogged down every time I keep trying to walk forward. It seems like I get stuck in the same place. I don't like being stuck in the same place. Right? Been there and done that? Been there and done that. I don't like that. But he 
gets me out of all that garbage and sets me on the rock and establishes my steps. Establishes my steps. He knows where I'm at. He's the one who leads me into the places he wants me to be. He establishes my steps. Amen? Amen. Praise God Almighty. Psalm 91 1 says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Isn't that great? Oh, man. You know, I was looking for something else in this, and I kept thinking, well, well, Psalm 91, verse 1's got it. Well, well wait a minute. Verse 2's got it. Well, verse 3 is pretty good, too. What? Ended up being Psalm 91. <laughs> it's all so good, you can't just pick one of them out of there because it's all talking about another aspect of how God has us. But if we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to be abiding in His shadow. Amen? Amen? What a comfortable place. Who can mess with you if you're standing in the shadow of God Almighty? Amen? There is peace. There's joy. There's victory like we sang about this morning. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Praise God Almighty. He is there with us. Verse 2 says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. My goodness. He is my refuge. I need a refuge from this world. Like Beth always says, and I, I honestly hope it's, it works out for her. So when she comes in here and dies in here one day on Sunday morning, so that she can, because she's at such peace here, right? Mm -hmm. And I tell her, I said, if, if it does, that's fine. That's okay. If that's the way God wants to take you, that's fine. You've asked Him for it, mm -hmm. you know? We all got to go sometime, and she wants to be in here because she feels so much peace. This is a refuge. Yes. Mm -hmm. We call this the sanctuary, right? Mm -hmm. It's a sanctuary. This is a place of peace and love and joy. Where God Almighty meets us and we meet Him. Amen. Yes, Jesus. And she Jesus. would like to go, and that's okay. I said, if, if, if that's when God calls her, I'll, I'll go for that. I will not have any problem. We'll <coughs> rejoice with her. Yes. We will rejoice with yes. her yes. because we know where she's going. Amen. My yes. sister is in the hospital again, and her husband passed away in at Christmas time, right, right before Christmas. And she didn't grieve for him because she knows where he's at. She knows good and well where he's at. And she's going, well, you know, when and if I go, she knows she's going to go sometime. She's uh, 12 or 13 years older than me, she's, so she's 77 or 78, something like that. And uh, she's going, hey, if God's ready for me, I'm ready anytime. I'll be in the presence of him. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen? Amen. Oh, man, I get to go with Him. Oh, my goodness. So when she does go, we're going to dress her just like we did with my mother, uh, our mother, and dress her in a white robe in her wedding gown. It was wedding day, right? Praise God Almighty. We had a great time. But He is my refuge. He is the place I can go to when all, everything gets crazy in this world. I can go and He's my refuge. He's a, my safe place away from the insanity that's going on in my life and in this world. If we'll have a, a nuclear war here soon, I don't know, you know, no, you know. Sometime, sometime the Word of God describes it real clearly. Read the book of Joel, chapter 2. Well, I'll tell you what. We'd have never dreamed of, of stuff like that being able to happen. Now we it, it can take place. And the word says he's going to burn this world up. Oh, yes. He's going to burn it up, praise God. But he is my refuge from all the craziness that goes around. There's many people getting really antsy right now over this thing. And if you live in Guam, yeah, you might be getting a little anxious about it. But he is also my fortress. When the enemy comes, and the enemy has ever come in uh, against you like a, a roaring lion, right? Yeah. But he is my fortress. Lord God, I come to you in Jesus' name. Let me rest in your lap, Lord God. God. Let me come into your lap and, and rest in you, Lord God. You are Jesus. my fortress. 
to where the enemy or anyone else cannot touch me. Yes. And my God in Him will I trust. Yes. My yes. goodness. Yea, though He slay me, yet I'll trust Him. Yes. <laughs> yes. It doesn't matter what happens. Yes. I'll trust Him. I'll trust Him with my leg. Right, brother? Yes. I'll trust Him with my shoulder. Yes. I'll trust Him with my finances. I'll trust Him with everything that's going on around me. Yes. I'll trust Him with my wife. Amen. I'll yes. trust Him with my eyes. Amen. I'll praise Amen. God Almighty. I'll trust Amen. Him. Yea, though He slay me, I'll trust yes. Him anyway. It does not yes. matter what's going on around me. Jesus. Our God is God. Amen. Amen. Listen Amen. to this. Next verse. I, I couldn't miss, miss one of these verses. Every one of them is perfect. Psalm 91. Verse 3. So surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Boy, the enemy ever set you up trying to snare you and snag you into something? Boy, I guarantee you. It seems like every time I turn around, he's trying to snare me and snag me into some kind of mess I don't want to be in, right? But he delivers me from that garbage. He delivers me from it. And from the perilous pestilence. When we get our bodies going crazy on us, and as you get older, you find out there's more and more stuff can go wrong with you than you ever knew was, uh, was possible, amen? But he delivers us from a perilous pestilence. I like pestilence, amen? So he shall cover you with his feathers. <laughs> he does that. Oh, Jesus says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I wanted to gather you under my wings as the, as the hen gathers her chicks, but you would not. Oh, my goodness, I want to. Yes, it is exciting, isn't it, darling? She's all excited about that, boy. But I tell you what, God wants to gather us and hold us under His wings and protect us. There's safety there. Amen. There's safety there. Under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Right? The shield of faith. There you go. What up? You knew it. That's good. Shield of faith. I know my God has got this. My God's got this. No problem. And truth be, uh, buckled around our waist. Amen. Yes, yes. The truth, the, the, the word of God buckled around our waist that holds everything together. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens yes. me, right? He is my truth. His truth shall be my shield and my buckler all together. I'm putting my faith in what is the truth? The Word of God is what the truth is. I put it in there. You tell it, little girl. <laughs> verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Did the enemy ever attack you at night? Is yes. it just me? He does? Okay, good. Okay, well, it's not, not good that he's doing that. But uh, you know, I'm not the only one, amen? Because the enemy will come and get you in the middle of the night. He loves attacking our little ones. In the middle of the night. I tell you what, you want to find out what's happening in your house, put a little one in there. And you'll find out in the middle of the night what's happening what in your house. Amen. They will attack them. They will attack you. The enemy will attack you in the middle of the night when you're trying to sleep, when you're tired and you're half in and half half out of consciousness. And all of a sudden the enemy will try and attack you in all kinds of different ways and throw all kinds of stuff at you, right? Yes. I don't like that. I don't have to be afraid. Afraid. Well, does that say that the terror of the night is not going to come? It says, no, I don't have to be afraid of the terror by night. Oh, get out. Who was this? Was it Smith Wigglesworth or someone that woke up and saw the enemy, Satan, standing at his foot, uh, at the foot of his bed? And he says, oh, it's just you. Yeah. Went back to sleep. Turned <laughs> off the light. Turned off the light. Get out of here, you know. <laughs> Shut up. I got other things to do than worry with you, right? <laughs> Our God, I don't have to be afraid of the enemy that kind of and comes in in the darkness. <laughs> he likes to attack in the darkness because that's where he lives, right? Yes. Nor of the arrow that flies by day. Okay, so you may get attacked in the night, that's one thing, but even in the middle of the day, broad daylight, all of a sudden the enemy comes and tries to attack you with stuff, right? But I don't have to be afraid of all that junk because I know that my God is bigger than any of it. 
Verse 6, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. Ooh, that walks in darkness. Some of this stuff, I'll tell you what. The, uh, what is it? Uh, oh, boy. Old age. Uh, uh, the, what just went out of my head? Dementia, Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's, old timers. Yeah. Yeah. Alzheimer's. Wait a minute. Was that a sign? No, I didn't get that. No. But Alzheimer's. Talk about the, the pestilence that walks in the darkness. That is right out of a pit of hell is what that is. Uh, there's nothing like Alzheimer's that's ever been known, and I hope with never anything like it uh, again. But it is a pestilence that walks in darkness. Amen. I've got a nephew that is 56 years old, 57 here in the next couple of days, as a matter of fact, that has got cancer. That is something that walks in the darkness. A pestilence that walks in the darkness. I don't have to be afraid of that. Nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. It doesn't matter what's going on. I don't have to be afraid of it. Praise Amen? God. Praise God. Listen to this. A thousand may fall at your side, uh, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Nothing. What? It, what? And again, in the New Living Translation, it says people are dying all around you. People are getting wiped out all around you, but nothing's going to touch you. Praise God. <laughs> isn't that great? That's kind Praise of what it's saying here, isn't yes. it? Yes. Because a thousand may fall at your side. Not that you did it. It's just they're falling at your side. And a th 10,000 by my right hand over here. But none of it's going to come near me. It's not going to touch me. Amen. My God is still God. Doesn't matter what's happening in this world. Only with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. All the stuff that's going on around us, right? All the things that's happening. All the people dying all around us. But we'll see. With our eyes we'll look and go, wow, man. That these people that are, that are evil are getting judged by God Almighty. Yes. Amen. We're going to watch it as the, the end times come and, and the the things that the, the the vials that are going to be poured out on this earth, things that are happening left and right. Uh, we're going to watch as God judges the wick, wicked going on around us. Amen. And we don't have to worry about that because you have made the Lord who is my refuge. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling yes. place. That's who we've made our dwelling place. I'm going to live in Him. Yes. I'm not going to be worried about all the stuff. I don't have to go, my goodness, what's happening here? But I'm going to live in Him. I'm dwelling with Him. I'm living with Him. Amen. Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock at the door yes. of your heart. Yes. Anyone who opens the door, I will come into Him and sup with Him. Yes. I will make my dwelling place there. Man, oh man, our God, that's why I don't have to worry about it. No evil shall befall you, yes. nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Amen. My goodness, Amen. I like that, that no evil is going to befall me because I'm dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. <laughs> I'm dwelling there, I'm living there. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. He shall give his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Boy, he shall give his angels charge over you. Remember uh, in the when the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness? And this is one of the, the scriptures that old smutty face tried to mistranslate to Jesus. So jump off this tower. It doesn't matter. You won't. He'll, he'll give us change. Uh, angels charge over you, that you lest you uh, in your heads they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Right? And, but he says he'll guard you, uh, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Oh, sorry, I backed up too far. Where'd I go? Back up here. Cheryl. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. To keep you in all your ways, right? Yes. It's, it's, so the enemy tries to twist this stuff just a little bit. He's keeping me in all my ways. And their hands will uh, bear me up lest I dash my foot against the stone. He's so careful 
for uh, our safety, he doesn't even want us to stub our toe. You ever stub your toe? That sucks, doesn't it? I hate getting stuff. It's almost as bad as getting your unfunny bone hit, yeah. right? And I don't see where anyone got that that's a funny bone because it ain't funny to me, right? But he is there to watch us. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. All the power of the enemy, right? I'm going to trample them under my feet. As long as I'm not serving them and I'm serving the Lord God Almighty, it doesn't matter what comes against me. In Jesus' name, you get out of here. You've got no right to be in my house. How dare you touch my family? How dare you touch my body? How dare you speak to my children like that? Get that garbage out of here. I don't want to hear that stuff. I have power and authority over that because oh, Jesus gave us that. Right. He says, I have been given all power and authority on this earth, and I give it to you. Hallelujah. I like that. Because yes, I don't do. have to go, oh my goodness, what do I do when the enemy comes to drag me up through the mud in the middle of the night, right? Praise God. Because he has set his love upon me. <laughs> because he set his love upon me. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Oh, my goodness. It's talking about us, that we are loving him, is what it's talking about. And I will deliver him. Uh, but therefore, because we have set, set our love on him. Some, I've heard someone say a while back that, uh, that, oh, boy, we went to a church and they were all saying, oh, I love you, Lord. Well, I'm a man. I don't do all that stuff, you know. It just sounds like too sissy stuff for me. Well, you know, you better get on with the program because the Lord God says he wants us to love him. Amen. And I don't mind saying, I love you, Lord. Oh, amen. I love you, Lord. My goodness. Where else are you going to go? I'll tell you what. I don't want to love this world That's because right. I'm going to be going along with what this world is half doing and what's going to happen to this world. But he sets us on high because we have known his name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. Oh my goodness. We call on him and he answers. He inclines to us and hears us. But I will be with him in trouble. Jesus said in this world you'll have tribulation, right? Seems like I read that somewhere. Yes. Right? So... I don't have to worry about that. He will be there with me Amen. in the midst of the trouble. It doesn't matter who you are. You're going to have something go wrong in your life. Amen? I do. i got a few things going away. I'd rather not go, but he's there with me. Yes. He's there with me. I've got to learn how to say, yes, Lord, whatever you want, whatever you have for me, I'll take what you've got, and I'll deliver him and honor him. Oh, my goodness. You ever been in places where people dishonor you? And say things they really shouldn't say or, or accuse you of things that they that is not true, right? We went through something many years ago when we were in Colorado that uh, someone put out some, some false information about Cindy and I. And uh, pretty quick, after six or eight months went by, and the person that was accusing us ended up leaving and taking all the money from a certain club that they were over. Uh, and then the people finally came to us and said, wow, you guys were right all along. I'm sorry for what I said about you. He honored us, right? It didn't yes. matter what happened. Yes. He honored us. With long life I will satisfy him mm. and show him my salvation. Praise God Almighty. Praise God. Praise. Satisfy us with long Thank life you. and show him my salvation. Our God is still here doesn't matter what's happening all around us. We still have his salvation. Amen. I want to rest in him and know that he is my God and there is none other. Amen.